welcome back. This is AKM to me, and today we're going to continue with the gravel bike project I have. I got some stuffs today. I got the fork. It's a carbon fiber fork. Uh, ordered on uh, eBay. Uh, it has a 50 millimeters axle. Uh, it's pretty light. I'm not going to weigh it, but it's pretty light. Uh, I also got the seat post. Also a carbon fiber one that I ordered on eBay. And what's up now is that I'm going to take off the rest of the parts from the old gravel bike and demol demolish it completely so I can start to put things together on, on a new frame. And then we need to pick the brakes as well. And I got this brakes in. It's a Caliper's from Shimano. It's a Shimano Dior. And uh, they're going to be replacing the Tiago one that I have on this bike that is flat mount while it is post mount. Uh, I got a trick up my sleeve when I'm going to do this to see if it works out. And if it works out, I don't have to bleed the brake completely. The principle and the thing I'm going to try is that I'm going to try to put this caliper in an upward position and then I'm going to bleed it by putting oil and fill this one up with mineral oil. And when it fill up, I'm going to remove the hose from the old brake and I'm going to try to put it on. And uh, hopefully I don't need to bleed the brake. might get some air inside, but nothing too serious uh, nothing that will affect the function of the brakes too much so it's going to be interesting to see if it works if it works it's good otherwise well I have to bleed it so it's not harder than that so what's up now is that we're going to remove all the parts from this bike we're starting by removing the crank set and this is a Shimano one, so you need this tool to remove the lock ring on it. Basically, you can do this with a lot of stuff. But the tool helps, but it's not necessary. It's just a plastic ring that don't fit very tightly. So you could actually do that with like a knife or anything that you could get inside here to just unlock it. Once that one is unlocked, you're removing it. And then you need to untighten the screws find, found, that you find on this side and on the other side. On Shimano cranks, you also have this little lock device which means that you can't take it out you need to pull this locking device upwards like this bam then it goes out like that fairly simple and to remove the other side just take a hammer and hit it a little bit and it comes off fairly easy so the cranks are off and before you're putting these ones on, on the other bike, or if you just service it, you need to clean off the axis grease and make sure they are clean. Uh, when they're clean, you could re-grease them and put them back on the bike. For now, I'm see here, this is how the principle work, and you tighten these two nuts, and the lock ring goes in like this, and it keeps it on the right place. Next step is to remove the chain. To do that, I use this tool. Uh, it's not necessary, but it makes it s slightly easier. To remove it, just put it into the chain and push it. And you see that it takes apart the quick link and the chain comes off. It's very easy, but it's not necessary. You could also hack this by using shoestrings or in some cases your hands. To keep track on all of the stuffs, 
the small stuff. I use boxes. It makes life easier and uh, you don't lose your stuffs. Keep also in mind that most change or at least a lot of Shimano chains are directional. So when you're putting it back on, uh, keep track on what side should be outside and what side should be inside. Uh, often the side that has the text is the side that goes on the outside. I will continue to take off the rear mech. This is pretty straightforward. On Titan, the cable. Like that. Remove the end cap. In most cases, it goes off by hand, but if not, you might use a tool. Uh, I want to keep this as long as possible because I'm going to try to reuse the stuffs. And if it goes up like this, there is a trick that you could actually use your fingers like this to twist it back in position. When the cables are off, you could just unscrew your rear mech. and put it aside. The next step is to remove the wires. And I do this as carefully as possible because I'm gonna reuse it. So I save all the cables that I have, put them in a box. And for now, I'm just gonna remove it from the frame and leave it as it is. I leave this on the handlebar because I'm going to remove the whole handlebar and the stem and keep all of this intact so I could just put it on the new frame. Before I can remove the handlebar I need to take off the brakes. It is advisable to put the screws back in, so you keep track on the screws, so you don't lose them. And just let it hang like this. Same goes on the back brake, the screws are located under the frame. When your brake caliper is free and hanging, you need to cut loose the cable before you can remove the fork. When doing this, be careful that you don't damage the, the cable. When your brakes are hanging free like this, and also your shifting gear, it is safe and possible to remove the handlebar. To do this, you need to untie the two screws in the stem and the top cap. I'm starting by removing the top cap. Next step is to remove untighten the screws of the fork and you should be aware that your fork is going to be loose now and it can fall off pull this upwards to get it off to keep this from falling off you could take your top cap And first remove the spacers that you want to keep and take your top cap and put it back in place like this and that will keep it from falling down. The bike are clean, everything is stripped off and um, I also put on an old handlebar just to keep the fork in place. Uh, you could also do that or you could use the top cap trick. Um, now it's time to start to build the other bike. Uh, all the parts are off this bike and it's time to focus on the next step in the project, which is the fun part, building the other bike. Uh, so keep your eyes open and uh, thanks for watching.